All right, we are back again. Did you miss me? It's been too long, chat. Anyway, this is Echo the Tides of Time, the sequel to Echo the Dolphin on the Sega Genesis. And uh, this prologue here is a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, turns out that the uh, Vortex Queen, who we just defeated, survived. And now she's kind of angry, and she's coming down to Earth, where she's going to start a new hive. I wonder what we're going to have to do about it. Oh, uh, what, what's that? Oh, it's the Earth. And... Oh, what's that? Something's falling to Earth. All right, let me get switched back over to my HDMI input. And we are going to start off by uh, <laughs> resetting the game because I need a couple of memory registers to have specific values for a skip later on to work. And those get adjusted uh, if Echo leaves the water or does a U-turn. So we don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, I guess let's get started. Uh, if uh, Booster, you're ready on live split. We will start in about three, two, one, go. Home Bay is looking a little different than it did in the last game. I need to talk to this dolphin, and uh, we're gonna swim through these rings and see one of the cooler features of Tides of Time, these 3D stages. Kind of Space Harrier-esque, we need to swim through these rings and avoid the uh, Chambered Nautilus, which is spitting poison bubbles at us for some reason. Uh, they don't actually do that unless there has been some very recent marine biology discoveries, but uh, you know what? Video games. It doesn't matter. We want to hit all of these rings. We lose about three seconds if uh, we don't hit a ring. You'll notice we are swimming closer and closer to this fancy new background. And in Crystal Springs, there's an involved puzzle we're supposed to do, but as you may have guessed, we just clip through a wall and skip it instead. You'll notice we still don't have an air meter. We've still got the Esterite's power from Echo 1. But uh, that's about to change right about now. Something has happened, and I no longer have the Asteroid's power. I got a surface to breathe again. Air is never going to be a concern in the run, though, so it's, uh, <laughs> kind of vestigial. Anyway, two tides should be called two glyphs instead, because we're going to use the same key glyph twice. Get rid of that barrier, swim back down here. Swim through the S-curve again. And we're going to be using this poor turtle as some ballast to push through this current. And who is this? Who is this really big, long-finned dolphin? This is Trellia, our descendant from the future. She's going to take us to the future for reasons. Uh, in the future, dolphins are psychic and telekinetic and can fly because they're filled with helium sacs. So take notes. You'll be able to uh, see in a couple million years how correct that was. And a small cutscene was supposed to play there, but because our memory registers were aligned correctly, uh, the cutscene was over before it started, so it got skipped. This level's kind of long and involved. We're just gonna 
swim to the end, though. Just bounce around this cliff. And hey, it's the exit. Gonna do the same thing on this level, only it is way harder and requires a uh, frame-perfect, sub-pixel-perfect alignment in order to work. But, you know what? We're gonna do it. Uh, almost had it second try. That's fine. It's a particularly stupid trick because it only saves about two seconds versus the intended route and has a high chance of failure, but it's a marathon. You gotta do it. It looks cool. Uh, so, in the future, the ocean is conscious, it feels and thinks, and this is its uh, cardiovascular system, respiratory system. It's a series of tubes, much like the internet, and uh, we're just swimming through them trying to avoid falling out of the auto-scroller. Not a whole lot to say, other than pretty banger soundtrack. We sing to the whirlpools to avoid getting sucked out. And onward to Tube of Medusa. So named because of that really big Medusa that we just swam past. But since we're so speedy, it's not gonna catch us. Onward to the Skylands. In this level, we're going to use bubbles to get high. We sing to these bubbles, they fling us through the air. Some clever D-pad inputs in midair allow me to uh, stay out of the water when we're doing it. Get carried by some psychic water dolphin. And onward to Fin to Feather. So, I don't know if you knew this about dolphins, but they turn into seagulls. So if you've ever seen seagulls, look at actually just transformed dolphins. Voice audio, machine audio, okay. We might need to do a control part of the Discord. So hopefully the audio is better. And I'm just gonna hope that corrected whatever the problem is. Eagles Bay, we're gonna do some more seagull shenanigans. Good now? Excellent. For whatever reason, Discord doesn't seem to like it when we leave it open in a voice call for, like, 36 hours straight, so we gotta reboot it every once in a while. We use the bird form's smaller hitbox to clip through that wall and uh, skip a good chunk of the level. And now, onward to Asteroid's Cave. Glyphs break on occasion, but they put back together well. Get fixed up. Gonna jump over here. Uh, put me down. Lousy dolphin. Anyway, uh, this wall's a suggestion. We're gonna go through it. Prepare another glyph. And hey, it's Asteroid, but... He's chrome now, because everything is chrome in the future. He explains that uh, the Vortex Queen uh, found out that he had helped you and come and murked him in his cave. So now we need to go back to the past and save him. 
Uh, normally, we were supposed to swim in between the double helix, uh, but uh, that's slow, so instead we pinned ourselves against the wall and kind of pushed Echo through. Shoutouts to Chubbus for uh, finding that particular skip. Free Chubbus. And now we are back in the past, a.k.a. the present. And first thing we got to do is rescue some tiny, cute baby orcas. Now, if you know anything about marine biology, you would know that a orca calf is already approximately the size of a uh, adolescent bottlenose dolphin. So these are like very, very premature orcas. These are positively fetal in their development, but that's okay. We're going to take it back to mama there and grab the other ones over here. And now we've got a bit of an auto-scroller. This orca is going to lead me to the exit. Now, I know where the exit is, but unfortunately it's blocked by some rocks that won't disappear until this orca gets to a specific point. And even if we could skip those rocks, we would still need to wait for the auto-scroller because the exit bounding box itself does not load in until this orca hits a certain point. So, you know, they, they were trying. They were trying to stonewall our speedrunner progress a little bit, but uh, most of the time we can bend the game to our will. When the orca gets to this point, we can just leave it behind and swim to the exit. And onward to Four Islands, which has, you know, another semi-auto-scroller. This is Blackfin. He's an asshole. He, uh, wants to prove that he's Big Dolphin on campus and tries to lose you while showing you the way to, uh, the route through the level. Like, just very cavalierly puts us through some enemies. He's gonna do some acrobatics here. There are four jumps, aka the four islands, hence the stage name. He likes to get stuck on some of the rocks sometimes, but he played it pretty well today. And he gives us this song that we'll use to shatter the stone. And there's another much nicer dolphin named Tara that uh, leads us to the exit, but we already know where the exit is, so we're onward to the Sea of Darkness. Oh, that was an alien. That would have been scary if we didn't kill it immediately. We're going to go back and grab this glyph a second time, because that lets us skip about half the level, and there's nothing stopping us from doing it kill another alien, and you might remember these stars from Echo the Dolphin. They eat rocks. And the game chugs quite a bit during the uh, palette transitions. That's okay. We rescue a baby orca, and this orca witnessed the uh, death of the asteroids and points out that Aliens took away the final pair of globes. That will be relevant later. Vents of Medusa. Ah, I didn't mean to sonar that glyph, so lost a couple seconds. It's fine. We want to try to avoid taking too much damage from these. We're supposed to turn into a jellyfish and swim through this school safely, avoid taking damage, but it's faster to damage boost through. You've got more than enough health everything's okay. And onward to Gateway. Very short level. 
It's uh, just swimming into these rings, and time for another 3D stage. This one is pretty annoying, because when Echo charges, he automatically locks on to the nearest enemy. And there are a lot of jellyfish, so you're liable to get pulled in a direction that you don't want to go. So, you kind of have to manage your charges. Oh, and I just barely missed the ring there. That's okay. We can afford to lose three seconds. And Sea of Green, uh, we're supposed to give a dolphin a fish in order to get a glyph, but we're going to skip that. He'll just have to stay hungry. going to use some more Chubbus tech here to just clip past the glyph. And use these rocks to swim through these strong currents. And onward to boss number one, Moray Abyss. This is somewhat of an auto-scroller, but we can speed things up by pushing the giant conch shell here. We take damage when we do that, though, so gotta fill up by eating some fish. We're gonna avoid touching the red eel, because that's basically an instant death if you do that. And more of the same, keep keep pushing. Alright, get some more fish, hopefully. Uh-oh, that's not good. Oh, damn! That was death number one. It has been a hot minute since I have died on this stage, but I was being a little bit cute. I was trying some more dangerous strats. That's okay. We got time. Okay, I managed to grab a fish this time. So we should be getting pretty close to the bottom. And we take out the worm, and oh, hey, it's the asteroid. Uh, sands, uh, just a couple globes, though. We're gonna have to rebuild the asteroid on the next few levels. And you might remember that it's made up of a lot of globes. So you are thinking right now, Ah, oh, Grim, that's gonna take forever. I mean, there were like, I don't know, 40 pairs or something like that. And we're gonna get every single one of them. I know that we're gonna get every single one of them because the game is sure that we did. but it's probably not going to take as long as you might think. All right, the eye. There's about uh, eight or ten pairs of globes in this stage normally, and we're going to get them all. How we're going to get them all is by not grabbing them at all. Instead, we're going to use this glyph to clip into a wall and uh, swim to the end of the level. And we're going to do something similar on this level as well. 
Big Water, so named because it is full of bigs, aka whales. This zip is kind of dangerous. It used to softlock the game like 99 times out of 100, but I figured out a safe strat for it, and it's just that easy. And onward to Deep Ridge. We can't skip this level, unfortunately. There are four pairs of globes that we need to collect. But wouldn't you know it? We've been collecting globes this entire time. Look at how healthy Asterite looks. See, Echo is a firm believer in work smarter, not harder. Just very efficiency minded. As we're putting the asteroid back together, he's given us some uh, lore dump about how when I traveled back in time in the first game, I split the stream of time into two distinct futures. We've already been to the good future, but there's another future, a dark vortex future. And uh, after picking up this last pair, Asteroid's gonna tell us a little bit about it. It's gonna tell us that the final pair of globes is in the Dark Vortex future, and uh, we need to find a way there. We can't use the Atlantean time machine because that can only take us up the stream of time into the past. So I need to find a way to get to the dark future. But first, I gotta turn into a bird. And I gotta clip through that wall. And wow, that was very quick. That would have probably been a gold split if this had been a real run. But uh, onwards to Secret Cave. The secret is that it's not much of a cave. We've got the best 3D stage in the game here. We got all sorts of sharks, and they let us go really fast. Because every time we kill a shark, our charge cooldown resets, and we can charge again. Killing sharks also removes lag frames from the game. So this 3D stage is awesome. You go super fast in it. Yeah, the, the lore didn't say anything about that, Zetox. Uh, don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, we are in Lunar Bay. This is where the aliens have started their new hive. And you can see, hopefully not too many aliens as we're swimming past them. We don't want to get grabbed because if we do, we'll get taken to kind of an alien prison level. And uh, that's slow. We want to avoid it. We're going to clip through this spiky barrier here, and oh damn, we're getting grabbed by some aliens and what? Rotating stars? That means time travel. We were looking for a ticket to the dark future, and these two numbskulls just punched it for us. And time travel is, uh... A little hard on the body. So those aliens self-destruct. And we're in the future. First thing you notice about the future is there's not a whole lot of water there. So Echo is finally the platform game that it so desperately needed to be. Gravity on this level also occasionally inverts, does some crazy stuff. And there's a very large skip that was once again discovered by Chubbis. We're gonna hit that glyph to remove a barrier. Gonna fall down here. I'm gonna tag the checkpoint there as a safety. Sono that ball. And what I'm gonna do here is leap up and get Echo into a specific frame. And Sonar will get shot through the wall. 
and uh, that didn't go as well as I wanted it, but I should be able to recover it. Oh, we're gonna get another try at it. So, make use of the pauser, buffer, and get the exact same results. We can get back up here. There's where I want to be. We just skipped about uh, three quarters of the level, two thirds, something like that. And we're already at the exit. I just need to get up here. Gravity is being a little hinky, but that's okay. Onward to Black Clouds. The route for this level has changed more times than probably any other in the speedrun. There are four barrier glyphs that you need to sonar to remove some walls that impede your progress. We're only going to tag three of them, though, because that's all you need. Then we'll use some creative jumping to uh, get to the exit. Last barrier down here. And I'm going to briefly piano the controller so I can hit jump and sonar at the same time, break through a rock, and we're at the end of the level. Graviter Box has some of the strangest gravity in the game, but uh, we skip most of it. In the intended route, you fall upward and fall sideways and all sorts of stuff, but that takes too long. We just skipped most of it. And we're at the end of the level and onward to boss fight number two, Globe Holder, which is, as you may have guessed, the holder of the last pair of globes. In phase one, we're going to bounce this around that was a very fast phase one. And phase two, we need to take a little more active of a roll and try to get it to bang itself into the wall, shove it into the wall. Sometimes it doesn't like to cooperate, that's okay. And decent phase two. Hey! And now we touch balls and we're going to go back to the past, a.k.a. the present. All right, back in the present. And we now have my favorite jam in the game. This is some awesome music. Gonna drop off the last pair. There is a soft lock that can occur here, so I'm gonna try not to do it. We did not soft lock the game. We can continue on to Dark Sea. We've got our unlimited air back. The Asterite summoned all of our brother singers to uh, help with the many Vortex drones. They're distracting some of the aliens while we break into the alien hive. And we've got the easiest clip in the game here. You just swim towards this wall real fast and clip into the auto-scroller section. By clipping in, you skip about half of it. We're just going to decapitate that vortex drone and let his head float around. As long as one drone is alive, the others will not spawn. So that just makes it more predictable. We don't have to worry about any of the other drone spawn locations. I just love the music here. Peak YM2612 FM synthesis. And I believe the heads probably despawned already. We're just gonna take out some of the baked beans here. Oh no, the head survived. That's okay, we blasted him. Thank you. 
And just coming up to the end of the auto scroller here. And it is the Vortex Queen once again. She's looking a little different. She's got some crazy tongue action and is trying to give us the suck. But uh, we just instead scream at her until she dies. And it looks like we've won. However, since this is an Ed Annunziata game, there is gameplay after the credits. So this is a false ending. And a good time to stay hydrated. But you know, our big problem is done. We've defeated the queen. The ocean is free again. And as is tradition for dolphin celebrations, we get to see some synchronized swimming. How high can I jump? Uh, not that high. <laughs> I've got a relatively poor vertical. Echo can jump pretty high. And all right, we've got, you know, you've saved the earth, you've saved the asteroid, you've saved the future, you're great. They're gonna sing about me forever. And this dolphin just tells us Ed Annunziata, followed by a bunch of Hungarian names. Don't know why, but uh, this is how they relay the credits for the game. Thanks for playing! Echo, echo, echo! And we're back in home bay. This is not a second loop. There is still more game left. We're on to the final 3D stage. And it throws a little bit of everything at us. It throws sharks, it throws jellyfish, it throws nautiluses. And the most important thing we can do is not get hit, because if you get hit in this stage, you die real quick. And if you die, you have to replay home bay and replay the 3D stage. And we just don't need that in our lives. Should be two more rings. And there we go. We talk to Asterite one last time, who explains that you need to go to Atlantis and destroy the time machine so this kind of dual timeline can never happen again. And we're in Atlantis, solving block puzzles. Block puzzles, block pushing, block destruction, just everything's coming up blockhouse. Anyway, we need to feed a hungry dolphin, because the dolphin is gatekeeping a key glyph that we need. So we sonar this little blue fish over to him, but haha, -ha, we despawned him before he could eat it, so we ate it instead. That blue fish has some interesting properties. It uh, will bring you above your max health. It is the only fish in the game that does that. 
uh, pretty useless in this situation because the extra health is not preserved between levels, but uh, hey, it's funny. We're supposed to turn into a school of fish in this level, but we skip the orb and uh, we're just going to swim to the end. Uh, the other dolphins would try to eat us. You know, that's some dolphin body horror there. But we are now on to the final level. And hey, that looks suspiciously like the thing that exited from the queen's carapace. We need it to open a uh, door for us. And... Get uh, some fish there, since we were a little low on health. Do a slight geometry manipulation to spawn the block a little earlier than it otherwise would be found. And we're coming up on time. Uh, time will be when the screen fades to black after I uh, swim into the teleport ring. So before that, oh, we just need to tail this larva. And time. <laughs> All right, that was Echo the Dolphin, The Tides of Time. The timer is still running for some reason. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was like a 34, 45, so pretty, pretty solid, even with a number of deaths. And this secret password was to be used, and if we are to believe Ed, is still to be used in a sequel to Tides of Time. Uh, and that will give us something. We don't know what it'll give us, but it'll probably be cool. Anyway, we've got a nice epilogue here where it explains that... Uh, the Vortex Queen, when she was defeated, escaped in larval form and went to Atlantis and used the time machine to travel back into Earth's past uh, many millions of years. Uh, there she found creatures that she couldn't rule over, so if you can't beat them, join them. Uh, the Vortex's descendants entered into Earth's ecosystem and became arthropods. So, another time paradox, but all of the, uh, you know, insects and crustaceans and various bug-like things are actually descendants of the Vortex aliens. And it turns out that uh, Echo is pretty bad at following directions. Instead of destroying the time machine, he used the time machine to disappear into the tides of time. Oh my god, they said the game title! Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I am Grimshins. This has been Segathon 6, and don't go anywhere because we've got a lot more hot Sega action coming your way. So, enjoy! Stick around. Fun times ahead. Peace.